Welcome back. At last we talked, the pistol had arrived into conservation. We had extracted two lead shot from the bar barrel of the pistol. As well, we had extracted the gunpowder charge from the barrel of the pistol. Uh, we talked about the chemical cleaning of the wood stock of the pistol to remove iron staining. And we also talked about how the barrel became detached, which enabled us to clean it separately. So today we're gonna to be talking about assembly of the pistol, preparing it for display, and how conservation doesn't end when the pistol leaves the conservation lab. Welcome to our Dig Deeper series, part four of a three-part series. The pistol itself is a multi-component object. I have mentioned this previously. You've got your wood component, iron, the lead shot, which was removed, so we don't have to worry about that now, and the copper alloy barrel. So with the barrel removed and the object so much easier to handle now, I had to concentrate on the wood component of the gun. And the next step in that was bulking the wood with polyethylene glycol. When the wood deteriorates in a waterlogged state, all that remains is the lignin skeleton of the wood. So we have to put in material to hold that skeleton, or that skeleton will crack and deform. And we put in this peg as that bulking agent. Now, to put in the peg, you actually have to put it in with water. So again, we have the issue of water. How do we keep the peg in the wood at the same time that we remove the water. That process is vacuum freeze drying. So after about five months of the pistol uh, immersed in a PEG solution, the polyethylene glycol solution, it came time to transport the pistol to the Mariner's Museum uh, where they had the equipment to freeze dry the pistol. Uh, the freeze drying process took about two weeks. Let's, let's take a look back to a video that we shot about the time that I was preparing the pistol for that treatment. So this here is a flintlock pistol, and this pistol was recovered from the second well at Jamestown. When it was recovered, it was in a waterlogged state, and in order to uh, store it or put it on display, we actually have to remove that water from the wood. So what we did with this pistol is we put it into a solution of polyethylene glycol. We then froze the pistol to freeze all the water that was in the, in the wood and stuck the pistol into a vacuum freeze dryer. And that enabled the water that was in the wood to actually sublimate, sublimate and go from a solid state to a vapor state. Then it actually removed the water from it, just leaving the wax as the bulking agent, as an internal skeleton for the wood. And this enables us to actually put the object on display or put it into storage in a dry state. What we have here is the pistol, and you can see some of these white deposits on the surface. This is because this has just come out of the vacuum freeze drying process, and that white material is polyethylene glycol. So, Having transported the pistol back here to Jamestown, I now had the opportunity to revisit the lock plate. Uh, I felt because the pistol was dry now, I didn't have to worry as much about aluminum oxide getting all over the place. Uh, so I decided I was going to revisit air abrasion on the lock plate. Part of that process was actually covering the rest of the pistol with uh, cling film, saran wrap. Uh, to help protect it, and I say help because this aluminum oxide gets absolutely everywhere no matter what you do. Um, but having the ability to use air abrasion on this lock plate gave me much more control than the Paleo Air Scribe or than an Air Scribe. Uh, and I was able to remove a lot of the remaining uh, corrosion crust and able to bring out the machinery of the lock plate itself in doing so. So at this point, we had several fragments of, uh, of the pistol that had, for the most part, been conserved, but they still had to be reassembled. Uh, this reassembly really had to take into consideration that 
if this pistol was to break again by accident, that we wanted the break to happen along a join seam or where we had adhered it together and not in a new part of the pistol. Therefore, we needed an adhesive that was strong enough to hold the pistol together, but also weak enough to be the new break point if it should break again. Now the adhesive that we used was uh, B72 and you can mix this to any kind of strength that you want to or really any kind of thickness that you want to. Um, with this pistol, I made it fairly thick. We say 40%. I use acetone as a solvent, so 40% B72 and acetone. That makes for kind of a very thick dollop of adhesive. And that, that allows the object, or the wood in this case, to be adhered together without the adhesive soaking into the wood. So if at a few, in a future date, if I had to take it apart again, you would basically be taken apart right where that adhesive was. The adhesive had not soaked into the wood, so you did not have to worry about that little bit. So having completed that, we also had to reattach the barrel. And reattaching the barrel, uh, the barrel meant we had to make an internal support. Uh, and this internal support would not be seen by the public and would be painted to look like it was part of the pistol for the small parts of it that were showing through. The internal support fitted in a gap left behind by a mass of corrosion material. Um, and once that corrosion material was gone, the, the barrel no longer had a place to rest. So this was uh, made to be inserted in between the uh, pistol body and for the barrel to actually be seated into it. And that was adhered to the barrel and the body in the same way that the pieces were adhered together with a thick adhesive B72. Having re-adhered the pistol and reassembled the pistol, uh, we now required a support to hold the pistol together. Uh, the support I constructed out of the same material that I made the internal support for the barrel with. Um, it was uh, glass micro balloons and B72 adhesive. Producing this and making it in the right consistency would allow us to press the pistol into this mixture and it would take on the exact form of the, of the underside of the pistol. Uh, it also provides a great support for the pistol as a whole. And this support can now be found along with the pistol in our display. And there it is. After 15 years of conservation, there's the pistol in all its glory along with a sample of the black powder and a couple of the shot, or the two shot. Uh, but remember, conservation doesn't end here. If you notice in the lower left corner, we have a data logger that records temperature and humidity and we monitor that temperature and humidity for issues that may pop up and we did have a small issue earlier this year where the HVAC system had a slight malfunction and within the museum we have data loggers positioned all throughout the museum to monitor the ambient em environment within the museum but we also have data loggers in select uh, exhibit cases now the data loggers in the museum showed us that there was a problem with the HVAC system. We came in and fixed that system so that was no longer an issue. But looking at the data loggers from each of the exhibit cases, uh, we saw no sign of that issue, which tells us something, which tells you something. First of all, the museum is buffered against the environment outside. But as a double protection, the exhibit cases are buffered against the, the environment within the museum. So we were showing an issue within the museum but the exhibit cases were perfectly fine. And this is the result. This priceless object amongst several other priceless objects all recovered from uh, early context at Jamestown. It's gorgeous. Well, thank you for viewing another Dig Deeper series with us and we look forward to seeing you again. Bye now. <laughs>